Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So as you can see on the screen, the last time we left off, we made it so that we can have multiple towers. Oh no, I messed up my pattern. We can have multiple different towers on the screen at the same time very easily by left clicking or right clicking. And obviously that's not going to be a permanent solution. You know, do I even really need to say that anymore? I feel like everyone at this point should know that the way we're introducing new features is kind of gradually and incrementally, uh, setting up frameworks that allow us to test out new features and towers and projectiles and enemies kind of as we go. So in case it wasn't clear to anyone out there that's made it, you know, over 50 episodes so far, which by the way, congratulations to all of us, I guess. I mean, 50 episodes, it's crazy. Uh, but it should be clear to everyone by now that the way we're testing features is kind of like on the fly uh, and we're making certain adjustments to the game that won't be in the final version, such as like in the final version, we obviously won't left click for a blue tower and right click for a red tower. We'll have some kind of tower selection pane, I imagine. Uh, but at any rate, what we're gonna do this time is we're going to introduce a brand new tower. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the last time we had a brand new tower, it was a cannon, but it was blue. This one's gonna be even more different. Uh, I created a few new textures for it. We're gonna make a new projectile for it and it's gonna have an effect on the enemy. It's not just gonna shoot it and do damage. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is creating an ice tower. So this is kind of an episode where I guess the rubber meets the road, if you've heard that idiom before. It basically means that the last few episodes of our series, we've been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work that haven't had a huge effect on our actual gameplay. And I've been telling you guys, you know, the reason we're making all these classes that aren't having a tangible effect right away is it should be easier for us in the long run to make new towers. So we're going to actually try that out this time and see if that's the case or not. We're going to see how long it takes us and how complicated it is to introduce a brand new tower into the game that has a special effect that the other towers don't have. So an effect that isn't available in our tower abstract class. So to do that, I've created a few new textures you might be able to see here in our resources folder. I have a cannon ice base, cannon ice base 2, cannon gun, and cannon gun 2. We're only going to be using two of those textures. Um, I also have a projectile ice ball. That's new as well. The reason that there is base and base 2 and gun and gun 2 is just because, you know, I'm recording this episode a little bit later than usual, and that's because I got sidetracked in Photoshop just making various tower designs. I actually have a few towers I've created that we're not ready to put in quite yet, but I think you guys might like when we see them eventually. Uh, as for these textures, I think I said a few episodes back that what I'm planning on doing, and what's going to be the case as of this episode, is these textures will be available as part of the source code package on Patreon. So if you want to download these Cannon Ice, you know, base textures or whatever, the gun textures that I'll be using in the video, in this video uh, episode, then you can go to patreon.com slash indie programmer, get the source code package, download the source code. It includes all the code that we've written so far, all the code from this video, as well as the brand new textures. So that's an easy way to get any texture I make forever for this game, you know, indefinitely. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then just make sure that you either create or download a texture that is 64 pixels by 64 pixels. Uh, that is if you're using the same dimensions as we are in the series. So there's plenty available on Google. I'm not going to go over how to do that in this video, but you can find it, you know, there's subreddits. What I might do actually is in the video description, if you want, I'll have a couple links for places to go to look for textures if you want to find them. Or otherwise, if you want to make your own, you know, feel free to do it in Paint or Photoshop or GIMP or whatever. But let's get on to the episode. If you want to download the ones I have, go to patreon.com slash programmer. If not, make sure they're 64 by 64. Okay. So what we're going to do first is make a class for our new tower, right? So that's the first step whenever you want to make a new tower in our game. So I really want people to pay attention to this episode, especially not that you shouldn't be paying attention to all of them, because this is the episode that you might want to go back to in the future to find out how to make your own new towers or to refresh your memory on how exactly the the process goes for introducing a new tower to our game. So again, let's go to new class and I'm going to name it tower ice. I'm going to make an ice tower in case that wasn't obvious from the texture names. And the reason I named it tower ice instead of ice tower is because I think we're going to name all of our towers, or at least I am beginning with the word tower. And that's just for organizational purposes. So that when I go through, you know, when we have, say, 100 classes, which isn't out of the question, uh, 
we'll be able to see all the towers are kind of grouped together. There's Tower Cannon, Tower Cannon Blue, Tower Ice, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Tower Ice, and of course, we're going to extend our Tower class, make use of all those great uh, methods and variables we have in our Tower Abstract class. And again, here's the magic. Just hover over this. Nope, that didn't work. Extends, there we go. Here's the magic. Hover over Tower Ice, and you can just click Add Constructor Tower Ice, and look at that. We're done. Constructor's made. It already knows the names of everything. Tower type type, start tile, enemies. It's all there. It's pretty much like our Tower Cannon Blue class already automatically filled out for us. So let's go back to our Tower Ice class, and we want to make some adjustments, right? Because this is going to be the first tower in our game that actually has an effect, uh, as in other than just shooting a projectile and having it damage the enemy, what I want to do is actually make the tower ice, or the ice tower, slow down our enemies. And again, the way we're going to implement it this time won't be necessarily how we do it in the final version of the game, but more just a, a quick way as a proof of concept to show that it is really easy to introduce tower effects into the game. Uh, so first off, let's actually go to our tower type class here and make a new type. This will be the second step. Uh, for making your own towers in the game. So step one was make a class for the tower and you know Make sure you fill it out with the uh, constructor there step two will be to go to our tower type class and Just put a comma here return to the next line and I'm gonna name it cannon ice New texture array And we put in our textures here, which for me is cannon ice Base right is that correct? Yes, it is uh, two, actually. I'm using the second one. Uh, quick load. Cannon. Ice. Gun two. And then get out of these parentheses here. Put a curly brace there. Comma. And we'll use the same values. 30, 1000, and 3. We're not going to mess around with different damages and speed and range and all that stuff quite yet. We're just going to focus on getting a new ice tower into the game. So that's as easy as that. Now we have our cannon ice uh, tower type. And I think what we might do this episode before the video is over is actually introduce projectiles as an additional variable that's part of the tower type. It just seems like the easiest solution to me to have every tower type kind of be responsible for what projectile it has. Because so far in our game, this might actually give us an error. We'll see. Oh, it didn't. You might get an error here because we haven't actually... It depends on what your textures are set up as, but... Uh, if you are getting an error when you try to run the game, you might want to go to your resources folder and right click it and hit refresh. You have to do that after you add in the textures that you are using for your tower. Uh, so what was I saying? Oops. Let's run our game. So, so far all of our towers, all two of them use the exact same projectile texture or really the same projectile altogether. And we're going to do something different with our cannon ice tower and presumably, you know, future towers like rockets or electricity or whatever. So it would make sense for us to actually distinguish projectiles from one another within our tower type class. Uh, but for right now, let's just focus on getting the ice tower into the game. So let's go ahead and go back to our tower ice class here. And I haven't really gone over this in depth before, I don't believe. But here, this line here where we say super and then type start tile enemies, you may have heard me refer to our abstract tower class as the super class. And that's because our classes like tower ice, also known as subclasses in this case, extend our tower class. So within the context of tower ice or tower kin and blue or whatever classes you have for your towers, the abstract tower class, right? Just named tower, is known as the super class. And so when we say super, we're saying do something in this abstract tower class. In this case, use that constructor that's in that class. So go to our tower constructor here, which takes a type, a start tile, enemies, and then does a bunch of stuff with it. And do that with these values right here. And the reason that's relevant is because we're going to actually make a custom shoot method for our ice tower. It's not going to be the same as our cannon towers, it's actually going to apply an effect, a slowing effect to our enemies. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to say public void shoot. And the first step here is we're going to say at override. 
And we might get an error because, yep, because shoot is actually private in our tower class. So let's go ahead and go to our tower class and change that. Just go down to shoot and change that to public. And now when we go back to our tower ice, you know what, I'm gonna exit these classes because they're kind of confusing me. All we need right now is our tower class and our tower ice class. So now when we go back to our tower ice, there's no longer an error. And what this override means is when our tower class is doing its stuff, you know, it's updating, it's looking for targets, et cetera, et cetera, eventually it's gonna shoot, right? But since we're using it in a tower ice class, instead of using this shoot method, it's gonna know to use this one right here, okay? So we're kind of combining the methods of our abstract class with those of our tower ice class. And now here's the last thing that might be a little tricky if you're not familiar with you know, Java abstract classes. We're gonna use that super word again that we were just talking about a second ago. And if you super dot, we have access to all of the public methods from our tower class. And one we just made public a second ago was shoot. And we're actually gonna put that right here, okay? So if you guys don't understand what this method does so far, is it, it's kind of like, I don't wanna say it's a joke, but it's, it's kind of ridiculous if we just leave it like this. It would make no sense to leave it like this. Because what we're saying is we don't wanna use the default shoot method from our tower class. We wanna override that and use a custom one. And then inside this custom method, we're just saying, use the default shoot method. It makes no sense. So why are we doing that? Well, because we can actually add more things here in these lines below it. So we still want to fire a projectile and reset our time since the last shot so we can, you know, reload or have that pause between firing. But in addition to firing, we want to do some extra stuff. And so one of those extra things we want to do is set our, let's go to our super and get Oh, we can't get our target. So let's go ahead and change that in our tower class. Just go to the very bottom and we're gonna make a getter for our target. So for whatever enemy we're currently firing at. So that'll be public enemy get target. And we're just gonna return target. And remember target is just whatever enemy this tower is currently focusing on and firing at. So now back in our ice tower, we can say super dot get target and so now this this line right here represents the enemy that we're firing at and then we can use our enemy methods that we have in our enemy class by hitting dot and let's go to set speed and i'm not sure exactly what the default speed is for these ufos but uh, let's go ahead and set this to four and we can delete these two extra lines if you have those okay so now, when we make a tower ice class, which is for our ice tower, it'll use all these uh, default methods from our tower class, you know, like we'll use the constructor, it'll set up all of our textures, our damage, our range, where we exist in the world, X, Y, width, height. It'll update normally, and eventually it'll come to shoot. So in our update method that runs every time the game updates, we'll notice if we have a target, if we can shoot, as if we have, you know, enough time between the last shot we took we'll call our shoot method. We're overriding that in our tower ice class, so we'll use this instead. And what we're saying is first, do the regular shooting stuff, you know, fire a projectile, worry about the time. We don't wanna rewrite all that stuff here. That's kind of a waste of space. And what we're saying on top of that is we wanna set the speed of that enemy that we're firing at to slower. We wanna slow it down because it's an ice tower, you know, it's chilled, it's cold. So we're gonna set that to four, which is hopefully slower than the average or the default, I believe it is. Uh, so I think we can go ahead and try this now. Let's go to our player class to kind of, you know, cheat a little bit and make it easy for us to put our tower in the game. And for left click, uh, actually no, let's make it right click. Instead of making a tower kin in blue, just change that to tower ice. And instead of cannon red as the type, just make it cannon ice. And we're gonna cheat in one more way, which is in our tower abstract class. Remember I said that we're gonna add projectiles to our tower types. Well, for right now, maybe we'll do that in a second. For right now, let's just change this bullet right here to, what was it called? I'm looking in the list. Projectile ice ball, okay? So because the way our projectiles are currently set up in our tower class, 
This will also change the projectile of our regular towers to the ice ball as well. But let's go ahead and start the game and see if we get our ice tower in the game with no errors. Let's play. There's our blue tower. And here's our ice tower. Now, don't make fun of my textures. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. But obviously, you can make your own or find them online. Or, you know, you can get these as well if you have the uh, Patreon package. But I'm not really sure the total overall theme. I'm kind of just messing around with the tower textures and seeing what works. Anyway, I was kind of not paying attention to what's going on here. But as you can see, we can get in the game and we have no errors. Uh, the gun I made for this ice tower is kind of like a little like sphere on top that circles around and aims at certain enemies. And we're firing the ice ball, which looks like a giant like snow cone kind of ball. I'll make another tower right here. And the enemies slow down. Now, you know, you may notice that the enemies actually slow down before the projectile hits it, and that's because right now we're handling that slowing mechanic in our tower class. So we're just saying as soon as you fire at the enemy, slow it down instead of when the projectile actually makes contact. And we can change that easily, but this is just an example of how, you know, how simple it is to actually go from an idea for a tower to having that tower in the game, you know, tracking enemies, firing enemies, locating them, uh, custom projectiles, custom textures, all that stuff very easily in just a few minute steps. And you know what? Let's recap those steps real quick one more time. So the first step, I guess, would be, assuming we don't count having an idea as a step, would be to make the textures for your tower. And if you recall the way we do our drawing, at least the uh, default, and keep in mind, you can actually override this draw method just like we overrode the shoot method. If say you wanna have, you know, the second texture rotate and the third one, you know, not rotate, but the fourth and fifth do rotate, you can just say at override and then have your own draw method here and it will draw however you want it to draw. Uh, so, but let's say you use the default one, right? The first step for making a new tower is to make the textures. Okay, next step is to go to our data package here and make a new class for our new tower. In our case, we made Tower Ice. Make sure you fill out the constructor here. You can just automatically fill it out the way we did last time. And then if you wanna have any custom effects, in our case, the custom effect was in our shoot method, you would just override it and make your own method. And really, the only other thing you need to do is go to our tower type class uh, right here and make a type for it. And it's that easy. So if you'll recall the first time we ever made a tower in the game, it was you know at least 20 episodes back, I believe, long, long time ago, maybe even more than that, it took us you know, five or six episodes just to get one tower in the game that didn't even track the enemies, right? Just to get it to like show up and like kind of like look around and then eventually we got to track the enemies and eventually we got to shoot at the enemies. Now, in just one episode, in fact, I've spent a lot of time kind of blabbering on here, you can really create an entire new tower in the game once you have an idea for it and have a texture for it in just five or 10 minutes. And so that's what all that background framework work that we were doing over the last few episodes has done for us, is it's made it a lot easier for us to have new ideas in the game quickly. Uh, I think we're going to save having the projectiles in the tower type class until next time because I want to spend some time thinking about whether, you know, how exactly we're going to do it, whether it's just a texture for the projectile and then we do all the custom stuff in the tower class or whether it's an entire custom projectile per type. Uh, if you guys want, you know, of course, feel free to go ahead and test it out yourself and see what works. But I think that next episode, we're going to focus on getting those custom projectiles in the tower type class. So every tower type has its own you know, custom projectile. And after that, we'll probably work on maybe getting projectile effects. So like I said, for this game so far, we have, or at least for our ice tower cannon, we have a custom effect for our tower in the shoot method, but it'd be nice to have a custom effect for the actual projectiles. So that way the enemy actually slows down when the projectile actually hits the enemy. So maybe we'll start working on that next time, but I think we're good for this time. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week on Indie Programming. <laughs>